CPCTC is this thing which you'll never memorize, so you can try, but it's like literally impossible. You'll get it backwards every time, but CPCTC is used in proofs, and you're, it's when you're proving triangles congruent. So typically it'll show up in a two-column proof. And what it stands for in the first place is CPCTC is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? CPCTC. And this is really like a, a formalization of something that's totally obvious, I guess. If you looked at these two triangles and someone told you these two triangles are congruent, which means they're the same, they're the same size, same shape, all the angles are the same, then you would know, of course, well, if these are congruent, I guess that angle B is probably congruent to angle E. I also guess that this side here is probably the same length as this side, and that's exactly what this means. So again, it's kind of formalizing something that would be common sense to anyone anyways, but what really matters here is the concept of corresponding parts. Corresponding means same position, right? And so obviously, who is corresponding to angle A down here? Well, you can tell by looking at it that, that angle D is corresponding there. And you know, when you draw two triangles that are perfectly identical side by side, identifying corresponding parts is super easy. I get that. But there are some kind of weird, weird ones where we can draw them. Maybe one is flipped upside down. You really have to focus. The other thing that's interesting about uh, labeling two triangles congruent is that you have to write them in order. So if you were to not draw a picture and you were to state that these two triangles are congruent, you would say this. You say angle A, B, C is congruent to, excuse me, not angle, triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. And you notice that wasn't an accident. If I said A, B, C in this order, I have to say D, E, F. I wouldn't say triangle A, B, C is congruent to D, F, E. So you have to keep these consistent. And what that allows you to do is kind of cool. It basically allows you to cheat when you're, when you're labeling corresponding parts. Because this is written in order, I can say that angle A is congruent to angle D. I know it's the same corresponding relative position. Angle B is going to be congruent to angle E. And then angle C congruent to angle F. And same thing with this with the actual side lengths. I could say side AB, which is this side here, is congruent to side DE, which is this side here. Again, this is like the best cheat sheet ever. Just because we have to write them in order, we can make some assumptions about which are corresponding and thus which are congruent. So these are beautiful, written perfectly. Let me show you a couple of cases where actually they're they look weird, um, but it's still two congruent triangles, and then you'll have to decide um, how, to, how to kind of label them as such. So this is a perfect example here. So let's say we had to make a statement about which triangles are congruent, and that way another person can come along and use CPCTC and decide which parts are corresponding. It's not as easy as just saying ABC is congruent to DCB. You actually have to totally focus. And what I recommend is you find some way to kind of cheat, right? So the first triangle, this one here, I th these markings, the this side here is congruent to this side, given by the double tick marks. This side is congruent to this side. Um, and it's obvious that A is going to be corresponding to C. So the way to do this is to say you just pick a direction. And whatever you do for the first triangle, you have to do for second. If I said DAB, the key is to look at what are some kind of indicating marks. DAB, it went from double tick mark to the corner, to single. So now looking over here, where is my double tick mark to corner to single? Is this the right way? DCB? No, that's single to corner to double. Remember, I went double to corner to single. That's the kind of trick. That's the trick to these. So this would be double to, sing to corner to single. So this would be congruent to B, C, D, right? And you can use these tick marks as, as you know, to kind of hints along the way to make sure you're going in the right direction. And so now let's make sure I'm right. So it looks to me like corresponding parts be D and B. Sure enough, this angle down here is congruent to this angle here. It looks like A to C, that makes sense, right? And B to D. And then of course you can test, looks like side AB here would be congruent to side CD. That's totally right. So just be aware of, you know, you can't just pick any three letters and call it a triangle. You have to make sure that the order, excuse me, let me put a little triangle in here. You have to make sure that the order works. So here's another one that's kind of weird. Okay, so here are two triangles that are congruent. But again, more importantly, I have to write a congruent statement and make sure that my order is consistent so that I can prove things are corresponding by CPCTC. So 
So let's start with this first triangle. And again, the first one you can just pick. It's the second one that you have to make sure matches. So let's say I decided I'm going to call this PTQ, right? PTQ is congruent to who? And then I said, well, it went like this, this way to this way. Oh, it must be STR, right? Again, be careful. This goes single tick mark, tick little inner angle guy to double. And then if I accidentally did this, it'd be wrong. This goes double to inner angle to single. So no, that's incorrect. If I do PTQ, I have to do RTS, right? Single to corner to double to get these to be congruent. That's it. I mean, you just have to be really careful with the order. And that is cool though, because once you get the order right, again, these are cheat sheets. P, angle P is congruent to angle R. T is congruent to T and Q is congruent to S and the sides are also congruent. But the bigger picture again is that for any two triangles that are congruent, every single, again, common sense, every single corresponding part must also be congruent. And these are used in proofs and in a lot of proofs, which is what kids are frustrated with, is that they are statements of the obvious, um, but they're not too tricky. So as long as you keep a focus on order and which parts are corresponding, matching, you'll get them right. So that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video.